Afsane, you've had a good part of your career dealing with oil. We didn't run out of oil the way we thought we would. There are a lot of issues, including geopolitical ones. But given what we just talked about, that possible paradigm shift from asset value over into wages, if you're maintaining a portfolio, if you're investing funds the way you do, Afsane, what does that tell you about what you do? Because it doesn't sound very good for investors if asset values are going down. David, even in this very difficult year uh, for the economy and for uh, renewables, renewables were up about 9%. Now, obviously, this year they fell uh, far behind oil and gas, as we all know. But if you look on a three-year basis, um, I have some numbers here. Clean energy was up about 8.9% versus oil and gas, which was up 3.3%. If you look over five years, again, uh, renewables have been doing better. So the interesting thing also is that from, you asked about wages, but uh, there's now more people working in clean energy than in fossil fuels as we speak. So the economy is shifting and those um, jobs are actually pretty well paid because there's a shortage of people who have the experience. So in terms of uh, investments, there are um, a number of areas obviously in climate, including food and ag. We're seeing that you know more people are looking for uh, for higher quality food. So there is a big, um, big potential for investing in that area. And it's not just in the short term because fertilizer prices are high because of the Ukraine war or, or um, supply chain problems. It's a longer term issue. So energy, clean energy um, and food and ag obviously have the wind on their back, especially also because of the new inflation act that is also going to put resources in that area. But even if we had not had the inflation act, you would still have a lot of interest in those areas. The only other two things I was going to say on that front is also biotech and um, life sciences that also got killed over the last few years relative to the rest of the market are very interesting. We look at it very actively, but, um, but again, those are areas where you see startups as well as established companies doing more and more. Last but not least, I would love to know what Greg also thinks if we could be going back to a 60-40 uh, or a 70-30, where people were getting bonds out of their portfolios, but is this a good environment to start thinking bonds if our scenarios about the economy are right? Yeah, so Asani, so it's, um, you, you know, I'm thinking the bond market's a modern day Poseidon adventure when I heard that, that quote. Um, so I do think the good news in the bond market is that we're largely past the pain. So it's been a really difficult environment to say the least. If you think about just the 10 year treasury, we were at 50 basis points. Now we're at 340 basis points. So there's been a dramatic repricing. High yield yields are up, you know, from four and a half to nine and a half percent. So I think we're getting closer to the end. And just six, nine months ago, investors were asking about the benefit of bonds in the portfolio, 60 40 construct. I do think that game has changed. It's still a little early because some volatility is on the horizon here, but we're in a much better place today than where we were back in uh, 2021 and 2020. Uh, so I feel pretty constructive, even though I do believe that there's volatility ahead. And just think about how we move from a Fed pricing perspective, right? So this time last year, there was basically zero Fed hikes pricing to the market, and now we're pricing in you know, close to four and a half percent. So that's a dramatic move, a real repricing. And no wonder why not only bonds were hit, but equities have been hit in the process. So, so Greg, let's pursue that 40 part percent of it uh, in, the, in the high yield, in the investment, uh, I'm sorry, fixed income part of it. Uh, we have people on here who say high yield, as you just said, that's a good idea. Investment grade, not so much. Is that where you are? You know, the, the high yield market is really different this time in this cycle. Uh, Asani talked about energy. So about 20% of the U.S. high yield market is the energy space. That's a very different market going into this cycle than what we've seen in previous kind of economic uh, downturns. It's a much higher quality segment uh, than we've seen historically. All the risk has been pushed off into the levered loan market. Investment grade corporate bonds also much longer duration, lower quality. So somewhat perversely and interestingly, the high yield bond market in the U.S. looks pretty attractive relatively. I just think it's a little early to get too excited as we enter or the possibility of entering into a recession as I have yet to see credit spreads uh, uh, stay stable uh, and not widen uh, heading into a recession. So that's kind of where we're at. But 
it's definitely something to keep on the radar and does change the uh, dynamic of 60-40. Uh, Sonny, another thing we hear from time to time is high yield might be the new form of equity. That that's the place you want to take your risk assets and high yield. As you look at your portfolio, does that make sense to you? Uh, you know, we're actually looking at maybe a derivation of what you just said, which is a lot of startups got um, got very large funding over the last few years. And as you know, it was relatively easy uh, for venture funds to raise money and for new companies to raise money. That has come to an end. And they don't go to the traditional high yield market, obviously, but as they can't get funding for you know the rest uh, of their growth, they're looking at new sources of um, in, in within credit markets. And so we're looking at those markets specifically because we think that there might be a lot of uh, really good value. I think on the high yield market, the, it's always, um, it's as Greg said, there's the energy component and the non-energy component. Obviously the energy component has a lot of oil and gas in it. And so we have not been doing a lot in that area. Uh, Afsani, I'm curious about when you talk about renewables, when you talk about some of the biotech, a lot of those firms, including the startups you're talking about, it's really based on the earnings in the out years. Uh, they're not making so much money now, maybe not at all. They're going to make it in the later years. As interest rates go up, that discount rate really hurts you, doesn't it? So does that Absolutely. still make it a good investment? I think it's still, I and mean, we still are going to do really well from innovation in our economy. So out of those companies, while, while a lot of them will need 10, 12 years to grow, some of them will not need um, as long as that. So you hope that your investments start bearing fruit. Some will bear fruit a little sooner, some will bear fruit a little later. But as a whole, we still expect higher returns relative to the markets. Let's not forget the kind of returns that we saw in equity markets over the last 10 years are unlikely in the next 10 years. And uh, no question mm -hmm. that uh, private investments in new startups will still do better in our, in our view. One last quick one, if I could, Greg, to you on fixed income. When you talk about, again, that 40% of the portfolio, do you have a preference for short duration? Where are you on duration? Well, so as of right now, we're pretty defensive on the duration side. We're, uh, we're um, pretty flat. But if you believe that the economy is slowing, then I think being long duration is the defense mechanism. And that's really starting to assert itself. Just look at the shape of the yield curve. So the market's basically telling you that that defensive nature being long duration uh, has value. And so that's why it's inverted as the market, the back end of the yield curve is not keeping up with the front end. Right. Uh, so the way I'm right. thinking about it, right. we're thinking about it at PGM is right. you want to actually be long duration yep. heading into a recession.